Welcome to the pre-recorded lecture series for services marketing. This is chapter one. This is the overview. This is the highlights package of the text and giving you a grounding of what to expect for services marketing and establishing some of the basics and some of the principles. So what we're looking at with the slide series is taking a brief look at some of the highlights in each chapter. So from the outset, we'll be letting you know what the chapter is supposed to cover, but also be looking at what are some of the ideas that are worth discussing, and what are some of the ideas that you can take away and implement either in assessment tasks or in your own practice. So the first thing that we really want to talk about is what counts as a service? Now, the idea of services marketing is that we're dealing with performance. So instead of dealing with physical objects, as we do in goods marketing, we're dealing with behaviors, with skills, the application of personal ability, personal practice. And areas where this is commonly applied when we look at it from the point of view of the industries, uh, we accept and understand that services marketing takes place across, say, healthcare. So when you go to the dentist, you don't take away a box of dentistry. You have the service performed on you. Similarly, if you go to, say, get a car repair, car maintenance, you don't take the maintenance with you, even though the physical act and the service performance took place on goods, namely the car, and that there were physical objects involved, what you were paying for was the skills and the ability of the service practitioner. So this means that in services marketing, we're looking at the performance and the skill set. Now, to give us a sort of framework for this, one of the things we look at is the idea of the tangibility and the intangibility. Now, tangibility is a concept we get we spend a bit of time examining, but it exists across a spectrum. So what we're looking for here is where on a spectrum would you expect to find the performance of a particular service? Now at the completely tangible end of the spectrum, we talk about items like salt, soft drinks, detergents, cars. We're talking about things that are very physical in their orientation. That's not to say that you can't embed a service atop a completely tangible object. But more realistically, what you're expecting is that when you're buying this particular product, you're buying a physical object. Towards the intangible end of the spectrum, you're looking at engaging with a performance. So if we take, for example, teaching and higher education, you don't walk out of a lecture series with a physical object that is the lecture or the knowledge. You find that you gain knowledge through interaction, you learn through engagement, through your own performance and your own practice. So services then looks at what aspects of this product are performed by the service provider and what aspects are performed in conjunction with the service provider. For example, with teaching and education, the amount of background preparation that you do, again, interacting with tangible or intangible items, interacting with the textbook, which is a tangible object, but the reading and the learning is the translation of the tangible, the physical book, into the intangible, the memories and the skills. The background preparation that you do for this course leads into the extent to which you can then engage in a completely intangible format in the classroom in the conversations and the discussions. Even this video is in effect intangible. You can't pick it up, you can't take it with you. You can play it and perform it, but you need to be present whilst it's being performed for it to work for you. And that's one of the key facets that you can tell in terms of tangibility to intangibility is whether you can stockpile or physically interact with the product offering. So the first key aspect of the unique characteristics of services marketing, in contrast to goods marketing, 
is the notion of intangibility. The spectrum of the intangible through to the tangible. And this is one of four facets we talk about in services marketing as being either the four pillars or the key characteristics of services. So what we're going to do is go through each of these four because they are critical components to help you draw a line between what is a goods dominant, a physical object dominant product offer, what is an offer that is a conjunction of service and product, and what is a purely physical object. So if we start looking at it from the point of view of in goods and dealing with goods, you expect the goods products to be physical, tangible, to have a level of standardization or to be capable of a level of standardization. They can be produced independently of being consumed, and this becomes a really important facet of services. And to some extent, the goods can be considered non-perishable insofar as a good that is created, if it's not consumed immediately, it's not lost. Now, perishability is, again, a sliding spectrum. The perishable can, physical goods can be perishables and perishable. But you have this idea that it's, you can create a product that is a physical good, separate and independent from where the consumer is located, and transport that good to the consumer. Now, the implications for these facets, again, each are going to be discussed separately. <coughs> but when we're looking at, say, intangibility, and this is the first facet to consider, is that the intangible nature of a service means that you can't build an inventory of them. In an empty room, you, can, you can't fill it with services that you can then draw on later. You can't prepare half a dozen haircuts in advance to distribute to people to take home. So that's the first aspect. The intangibility takes out the ability to stockpile to inventory. It also, the intangibility means that some of the cues that we would rely on as consumers in terms of being able to observe a product in advance aren't present. So you can't really display a service without someone experiencing it. Even to the extent that you can demonstrate or show a service, where that service has an experiential part, we can't play that experience, the sensory satisfaction, to the person whilst they're looking at, say, you watch a YouTube video of car maintenance, you don't necessarily get a sense of the satisfaction and gratification that someone looked after your baby properly, or you don't get the sense of confidence and relief that this car is in good working order, it's safe to drive, before you set off on a thousand kilometer road trip. So you have the difficulty in communicating and displaying services because they're intangible. The other part that makes for a challenge for a marketer is pricing of intangible goods is difficult. Price is used as a cue and as a proxy cue for quality when there's nothing to see and there's no object that you can go and measure or assess or gauge the quality by looking at it. So what we do when we've got something like intangibility is that we can either work with it and use it as a beneficial part of our design, or we can work against it and bring in facets of marketing to reduce the perception of intangibility. For example, in this course, education being as is extremely intangible, one of the tangible aspects that I'm bringing in is the use of the textbook. By providing you with a large physical object that has the embedded knowledge in it, I am able to bring a level of tangible. So I can say to you, read the case study at the end of the chapter, and there's a physical object for you to interact with. And that reduces some of the uh, uncertainty around the intangibility. If I was to say to you, go out and observe a service, there is nothing physical involved here. There is no tangible element. So it's hard for you to tell whether, in fact, you know, what's happening here, what's the good deal, can you preempt it. 
So intangibility, this is a facet where we talk about throughout the course. And when we talk about things like product design or service blueprinting or the service scape, we're talking about raising or lowering the level of intangibility attached to a service. Heterogeneity. Again, all of these facets we need to think of as unique elements and elements that you either build on or you try and reduce. Now, satisfaction and satisfaction in services is very subjective. How you feel, you as the consumer, is as important as the actual production and performance of the service. So there are a lot of facets and factors that we can't control from the outset. Customer service and customer satisfaction is variable because you have one human interacting with another. So you've got the human dynamics. You also have this element that we talk about in terms a little bit later in the presentation of search experience and credence products. Quite often when you're having a service performed, you don't know if the service is the best service it could have been. Say, for example, you go to see a performance of a play and you walk out afterwards and you're not, you just don't know, uh, did you like it or not? You're not really sure. There are too many facets that you're trying to process and you don't know if that was the best it's ever going to be. Similarly, in, because of human performance, the same service is rarely able to be delivered twice. So this has a factor which we can reduce this uh, heterogeneity through aspects such as pre-recording a lecture because even if I was to sit down and pre-record this lecture again I wouldn't perform it in the same way. My application of my personal skill set will vary so what we're looking at here is what can we do to increase the consistency and the standardization and treating that as a factor that we can increase heterogeneity or we can emphasize the heterogeneity as a feature of the service. For example, you go to see a comedian, stand-up comedian, the heterogeneity of no performance, no two performances being alike is a selling point. This is a really original performer because you don't see the same thing twice. Whereas if you go to see a band play and they play different songs each night, suddenly it becomes a challenge of were you there on the night? the heterogeneity makes it exclusive. So we can also look at heterogeneity as the basis for customization. No two services are performed the same way because each service is custom and each service relies on the interaction with the customer. Which brings us to the third facet. Simultaneous production and consumption creates a set of benefits and a set of disadvantages. On the benefit side is customers participate. You react in real time. You're in a service, this service is happening with you and to you. So how you perform in the service can also dictate your satisfaction. Similarly, when you're at a multi-customer service, for example, you're flying on an aircraft or you're attending a concert or you've gone to a lecture, how the other people in the audience participate, how the other passengers on the flight, how the other people in the audience, or how the other people in the group, those dynamics become a feature of the service. And they are dynamics that are being influenced by other customers behaving in the service encounter. Now, I just want to quickly emphasize that customers will have an impact on each other, just to remind you that across the course of the semester, how you come to the seminar series and how you engage with the seminar series will have the opportunity to positively impact on the experience of those around you. So if you're feeling that, you know, you just your plan was you're just gonna sit at the back and you know say nothing, do nothing, I really encourage you to participate so that you get to engage, but also your knowledge and your skills will benefit will be, and will enhance the service experience for those in the room with you. 
So collectively, if we're all in this together and we all participate and we all perform our roles, we're all going to get a better service experience. And that's one of the challenges of services marketing is enabling and engaging the customer so that the customer feels that they are in a position to make an active and positive contribution to the service experience. The other element of the that we need to talk about as marketers is the simultaneous production and consumption means your distribution network becomes critical. You have to be at the point where the consumer is to engage with the consumer. There's not a lot of stockpiling, there's not a lot of mass production, there's not a lot of background preparation you can do. If you're using a goods component to your service, yes, you can stockpile back, prepare, develop in advance. One of the aspects that I'm using in this course, in this course design, is the pre-recorded lecture is an attempt to reduce some of the simultaneous production and consumption elements allowing you to consume the slide series and the lectures in advance means that when you come to the discussion and the dialogue, you've had preparation time, time to think, time to engage with the textbook, to do the readings independently, so that when it comes our chance to talk, that we've separated some of the production and some of the consumption aspect. But still, on the ground, in the classroom, in the seminar, it's simultaneous production and consumption. Also, just briefly should mention that the internet has helped extract some of the simultaneous production and consumption elements, but also created a lot more uh, opportunity for real-time engagement, where previously you could switch off your service at five o'clock. Now with online service delivery, 24 seven coverage for the internet, you can have service encounters well beyond the point that we were previously dealing with with some of our thinking in the 80s and 90s. Perishability. We're going to talk about perishability in quite a degree of detail when we get down to both pricing and distribution because these become critical factors. I'd say to you now that one of the things about perishability to really appreciate is that it's a problem to be solved. And sometimes you can solve it by making it a premium feature. In the use it or lose it type of mentality or the limited time offer or exclusivity. Friday afternoons, be there or you don't get the engagement. Now, it's perishable. That class will not, I can't stockpile it. I can't, if after the class you can't give it back to me. We have all had that phrase of, well, there's two hours of my life I won't get back after walking out of a bad movie. That is the element of services that you can't return time. You also have the element of services where if you have physical capacity, and we're talking here, rooms, lecture rooms, tutorial spaces, seats on an, an airline, cabs at a cab rank, Synchronizing supply and demand so that you don't have as much downtime on your physical assets in your service becomes an important part of a lot of the planning and strategy work that we do in services marketing. Okay, search, experience and credence qualities. I'm going to really flag this to you as one of the most interesting aspects of services marketing that comes back time and time again. So this diagram and the corresponding section of the text, I really want you to engage with this. I really want you to think about this. Because when we start looking at products across the board, we're talking services, goods and ideas. We're looking at evaluation, consumer evaluation of the quality of these products. A high search quality means that it has features that are easy to evaluate it's much more tangible you've got these elements where it's you can hold two items of similar nature side by side and you've got a like versus like contrast so search and we look at the examples here clothing jewelry furniture houses really big big ticket items that 
heavy in the search, lots of characteristics, lots of qualities that you can use as points of comparison. When we move towards the middle and we start to look at the crossover between goods and services, we start to bring in the experience. Now this is where you start getting a subjective element where your judgment has there are tangible or there are quantifiable components, there are search components, but there's also that emotive personal satisfaction element. So in a high in experience quality product is one where two people with the same product can have two completely different responses to the level of quality and can be looking for two completely different ideas. A hotel stay can be just a chance to recharge and refresh as a stopover point on a journey, or it can be a chance to relax, get away from it all. So it can be escape from life or part of a work trip. So in that case, you're still going to have a series of different facets, but there's certain levels that you can go and have a quantifiable and certain levels that are heavily subjective. Then we come down to credence products. And now there's a lot of stuff in services that are around credence. Basically, the question of the credence is, do I know enough about the service in order to judge the service? And this becomes a really critical factor because you're starting to say, what is it that, why am I, why do I undertake the service? Like, why am I using the service? For example, dentistry or legal services. Even with dentistry, even with a dental qualification, can you judge whether your dentist was on par, had a good day, or had a bad day? With a legal service, we always joke about this one in the services business of if you get 18 months, you get a um, sentence of 18 months, you either had a really good lawyer or a really poor lawyer, but can you tell whether you were supposed to get 25 to life or whether you were supposed to get off free. So the credence elements here become really critical because you're now unable to judge the service on the basis of the service. So you will start looking for other proxy measures. In credence, you will quite often look at price, or you'll look at the service scape, the physical environment in which the service is being conducted to look to your cues as to whether there was a positive, it was a good service, or whether it was a satisfactory outcome. The other element with the credence service from a marketer's perspective is it's a lot easier to improve performance post facto. That you can reinforce and reassure your, your consumer's decisions and you can reassure your consumer's cognitive dissonance with a difficult to evaluate service by using post-service follow-ups and using communications, IMC, and advertising to reinforce the positive outcome. So there's a couple of challenges of services marketers that come up, and we're going to talk these three slides worth of some of the challenges. This is basically letting you know the sorts of thing we're going to engage with over the course of the semester. Top of the list of challenges is going to be quality. Services are intangible, so how do you know when it's been a good quality performance, and then how do you replicate that high quality performance because it was heterogeneous and because of the simultaneous consumption. We also come in with a final bonus thing on quality is that the zone of tolerance, which we talk about in the next chapter, means that if you have a very high quality service first time, on your second encounter, your expectations for the quality of the service have been raised. So whether in fact you can provide two identical strength services of identical quality back to back, the customer will perceive the second one as being not as good because they've already learnt to expect, they've moved up their baseline expectations. So there's less of a gap between the high quality and the customer's expectation. It's one of those challenges. The other elements in the course we're going to talk about new service delivery and new service development. 
Uh, one of the facets of services marketing is because they are skill based, it's easier to develop a new product, test it, try it, and then see if it doesn't work, modify it, and you can even pretty much improvise a new product as required in a service environment. Communications comes in late in the semester and we talk about the use of branding, imagery and IMC to project quality and also to train and teach the customer their role in the service process. Because one of the things that's critical is that if a service requires co-production, you need to ensure that your customers are skilled in their role and your staff are skilled in interacting with those customers. Demand management becomes uh, an element we talk about. We've mentioned this in perishability. It becomes a critical factor in distribution and a facet of pricing. How do we move the market so that peaks become flatter, troughs become low, less impact, that we have downtime where it's needed? So we have preparation downtime, we have post-service downtime, but we don't lose a lot of the downtime required for preparation with poorly balanced loads of service demand. Obviously, we talk about pricing. There's a strategy and tactical element to this course. That's one of the things uh, I like to emphasize the strategic side of services. The employee becomes an important facet of how services are delivered. And this is one of the things that we'll talk about is that in services marketing, people are a key ingredient of the marketing mix. Finally, in terms of the challenges we're going to face, standardization and personalization. It is a balancing act. You can heavily standardize a service, but you lose some of the benefits of the personal touch and using human actors in the roles. At the same time, personalization may not lead to profitability because you're over customizing, so you're losing economies of scale or you're losing the opportunity to increase the consistency. Last element that's a critical component here, consistency of delivery. That's both product, people, and distribution. And the communication of the quality and value, which is product, price, and promotion. So these are some of the aspects that marketers have found to be a difficult thing. You'll note that we're looking at about 10 or 12 possible things that we need to be discussing across the semester. So there's plenty of content for you to really dig into. And at the same time, it's one of the challenges that you're engaging in a service. So if you look at these elements and say, well, how would we protect a service concept when it's intangible, it's skill-based, and it's co-created? So the customer goes to, if your customer goes to another service provider and to you, how much of this customer's co-creation element is transferable? What if the customer is bringing things that they've learned from a rival back to your firm and you're learning from them? Where do we stand on defending against that sort of transference of the service concepts and service ideas? All right, briefly, I'm going to assume that you are familiar with the conventional marketing mix. If you don't have a grounding in the four Ps, price, product, promotion, place, I'm going to ask you to get that backgrounding. So get yourself an intro to marketing text, ensure you've got the backgrounding. This will be taken as knowledge you already have, so that we will build on this and expand into the extended services marketing mix, which is about people, physical evidence, and the processes. Now, when we talk about people, we are talking about both customer and the employee, so we're looking at who works for us, who are our customers, and who are our customers engaging with in the service encounter. Physical evidence, this is where we're looking at the tan in bringing tangible items, artifacts, and elements to the intangible. So one of the things we've found in the history of services research is tangibility is a positive, but tangibility can be enhanced by bringing in physical objects. Lastly, services is a performance. So underpinning a performance is the back room and the background processes. So we're looking at mechanisms, flows of activity, 
when looking at service design, how to make the sequence of events that underpin a service, how to make best use of those, and that's the procedural element. And if you look at the definition of marketing, the AMA 2007 definition of marketing, you'll note that the process of marketing and the procedural elements of marketing is a key and critical part of how marketing is thought of by the American Marketing Association. And that's reflected here in the use of a dedicated part of the marketing mix to talk about how services will be performed. So I'll draw your attention back to table 1.3 in the text. I'm going to ask you to really take the time in the first week to refresh your memory of the four P's of marketing, but also look at these new elements, people, physical evidence, and process, because you can use those back in the conventional 4P marketing mix, but their strength really is in services marketing. And lastly, let's talk about it briefly. What way do you want to use this for the four and the seven P's of marketing? And in services, one of the things that we really look at here is these are, we ask a lot of questions. Because services is, is an intangible performance, it's easy to ask a question and then answer it through either modifying your service delivery or reinforcing an aspect of how you use your service designs. So these are the elements and the key component parts and the ways to use the seven piece of marketing become for the sort of question that you want to be thinking through, saying how well are we using the mix? What are the limitations? Because the mix is a way of seeing the world from the company side as to what are the controllable elements that we can influence and implement to use on our customers. And lastly, the elements that we want to look at here is with the service product that we're offering, how well are we communicating the role, the expectation, and the quality to the customer before, during, and after the service environment? So that wraps it up for chapter one. If you've got any questions, contact me either on Twitter, at Stephen Dan, or on the email address, stephen.dan at anu.edu.au and as always with these uh, pre-recorded classes read the chapter the chapter is going to be uh, full of the details the nuances and the examples so in conjunction the text and the chapter gives you the background preparation so that if you want to come down to the classes and have a chat you've got a grounding so you can engage more freely and on the basis of services marketing knowledge. And that's a wrap for this chapter.